classification of bacteria based on morphology and flagellation. Introduction Bacteria constitute a large domain of the prokaryotic microorganisms. Typically a few micrometers in length, bacteria have a number of shapes ranging from spheres to rods and spirals. Bacteria were among the first life forms to appear on earth and are present in most of its habitats. Bacteria inhabit soil, water, acidic hot springs, radioactive waste and the deep proportion and the deep portions of the earth's crust. Bacteria also live in symbiotic and parasitic relationship with plants and animals. Bacteria display a wide diversity of shapes and sizes called morphologies. Bacterial cells are about one-tenth of the size of eukaryotic cells and are typically 0.5 to 5 micrometers in length. Many bacterial species exist simply as single cells. Other associate in characteristic patterns. Neisseria form diploids or pairs. Streptococcus forms chains and Staphylococcus groups together in bunch of grape crusters. Bacteria can also be elongated to form filaments. For example, the actinobacteria, filamentous bacteria are often surrounded by a sheath that contain many individual cells. Certain types of species of the genus Norcadia even form complex branched filaments similar in appearance to fungal mycelia. Bacteria often attach to subsurfaces or surfaces and form dense aggregations called biofilms or bacterial mats. These films can range from a few micrometers in thickness up to half a meter in depth and may contain multiple species of bacteria, protists and archaea. Bacteria living in biofilms display a complex arrangement of cells and extracellular components forming secondary structures such as microcolonies through which there are networks of channels to enable better diffusion of nutrients. In natural environments such as soil or the surface of plants, the majority of bacteria are bound to surfaces in biofilms. Biofilms are also important in medicine as these structures are often present during chronic bacterial infections or in infections of implanted medical devices. And bacteria protected within these biofilms are much harder to kill than individual isolated bacteria. Even more complex morphological changes are sometimes possible. For example, when starved of amino acid, myxobacteria detect surrounding cells in a process known as quorum sensing, migrate towards each other and aggregate to form fruiting bodies of up to 500 micrometers long and contain approximately 1 lakh bacterial cells. In these fruiting bodies, the bacteria perform separate tasks. This type of cooperation is a simple type of multicellular organization. For example, about 1 in 10 cells migrate to the top of these fruiting bodies and differentiate into specialized dormant state called myxospores, which are more resistant to drying and other adverse environmental conditions than are the ordinary cells. Let us look at classification of bacteria depending on their shape. Number 1 is the cocci, which is derived from cocos, meaning berry. These are oval or spherical cells. These cocci may be arranged in pairs which is called diplococcic, chains, streptococci and clusters which are staphylococci. Number 2 is bacilli. Bacillus meaning rod. These are rod shaped cells. Some of these bacilli may be having peculiar arrangements or shapes as follows. The coco bacilli in which length of the bacteria is approximately same as the width. Example is brucilla. The streptobacilli. These bacilli are arranged in chains. Example is streptobacillus. The Chinese letter or cuneiform pattern. 
in which they are arranged at angles to each other. Example is corny bacterium. Comma shaped or curved appearance. Example is vibrio. Spirula or rigid spiral forms. Example spirulum. Number three is the spirochetes. Form spiria meaning coil, kate meaning hair. These are slender flexus spiral forms. Example is treponema. Number four is actinemycetes. Actis meaning ray and mycis meaning fungus. These are branching filamentous bacteria resembling fungi. Number five is mycoplasmas. These bacteria are cell wall deficient and hence do not possess a stable shape. Let us study the aggregations. Aggregations of cocoid bacteria often occur and these forms have specific names as well. Some of the basic forms as well as representative bacteria genera are pairs or diplococcic, which is Neisseria. Groups of four or eight known as tetrads or sarcina. An example is micrococci. Bead-like chains or streptococci. Grape-like clusters seen in staphylococci. Diplococcus. A diplococcus, plural which is called as diplococci, is a round bacterium which is a coccus that typically occurs in pairs of two joint cells. Examples are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Moraxilla cartahalis, Neisseria gonorrhea and Neisseria meningitidis. The name comes from diplo meaning double and coccus meaning berry. This is because berries are round like a diplococcus and diplococci come in pairs of two. Cocobacillus A cocobacillus is a type of rod-shaped bacteria. The word cocobacillus reflects an intermediate shape between coccus which is spherical and bacillus which is elongated. Cocobacilli rods are so short and wide that they resemble cocci. Haemophilus influenciae and Chalmedia trachomatis are cocobacilli. Aggregatibacter Bacter comitans is a gram-negative cocobacillus which is prevalent in subgingival plaques. Acinatobacter strains may grow on solid media as cocobacilli. Bacterial anatomy The outer layer or cell envelope of bacteria consists of two components the rigid cell wall and an underlying cytoplasmic or plasma membrane. The cell envelope encloses the protoplasm which comprises of cytoplasm. Cytoplasmic inclusions which are the mesosomes, the ribosomes, inclusion granules, vacuoles and a single circular chromosome of deoxoribonucleic acid that is the DNA. Besides these essential components, some bacteria may possess additional structures such as capsule, flagella and the fimbriae. The cell wall. The cell wall is a tough and rigid structure surrounding the bacterium like a shell. The cell wall has the following functions. It accounts for the shape of the cell. It provides protection to the cell against osmotic damage. It confers rigidity upon bacteria. It takes part in cell division. It possesses target site for antibiotics, lysozymes and bacteriophages. The rigid part of the cell wall is a peptidoglycan. Let us look at what is gram stain. It is the most widely used stain in bacteriology. It is a differential stain which imparts different colors to different bacteria or bacterial structures. The stain was originally devised by the histologist Christian Gram in 1884 as a technique of staining bacteria in tissues. Nowadays, modification of original Gram stain is used. Differentiation on Gram staining Two broad groups that is gram positive and gram negative is obtained. Gram positive group resists the decolorization and retains the color of the primary stain which is violet. Gram negative are decolorized by acetone or alcohol and therefore take the counter stain and appear red. Let us look at the gram negative cell wall. 
the gram negative cell wall is a complex structure with the following components it has a lipoprotein layer it connects the peptidoglycan to other membranes it has an outer membrane this contains certain proteins which are target sites for phages antibiotics and bacteriocins it also contains lipopolysaccharides this layer consists of a lipid a to which attached is a polysaccharide lipopolysaccharides constitutes the endotoxin of gram negative bacteria the polysaccharide determines a major surface antigen the o antigen the toxicity of bacteria is associated with the lipid the periplasmic space it is the space in between the inner and the outer membranes it contains various binding proteins for specific substrates and the last is the peptidoglycan let us look at the gram positive cell wall it contains the peptidoglycan this layer in gram positive bacteria is thicker that is 16 to 18 nanometers than in gram negative bacteria which is 2 nanometers it contains tetracoic acid gram positive cell wall contains a significant amount of tetracoic acid which is absent in gram negative bacteria the tetracoic acids constitutes major surface antigens of gram positive bacteria bacteria with defective cell wall bacteria without cell walls or with deficient cell wall are of four types first one is the mycoplasma this is a naturally occurring bacteria without cell walls the second one is the l forms while studying streptobacillus monili forms in the lister institute london a scientist observed abnormal forms of bacteria and named them the l forms after the lister institute l forms either developed spontaneously or in the absence of penicillin or other agents that interfere with the synthesis of cell wall l forms is sometimes spontaneously formed in patients treated with penicillin protoplasts these are derived from gram positive bacteria they contain cytoplasmic membrane and cell wall is totally lacking these are produced artificially by lysozyme in a hypertonic medium the spiroplasts these are derived from gram negative bacteria they differ from the protoplasts in that some cell wall material is retained major taxonomic groups of bacteria as per burgi's manual divided as gracile cutes that is gram negative cell walls which are thin skinned firmicutes which are gram positive cell walls which are thick skinned teneri cutes lack of cell wall and are soft mendoci cutes arche primitive prokaryotes with unusual cell wall and nutritional habits let us look at the cytoplasmic membrane it is 5 to 10 nanometers thick elastic semipermeable layer which lies beneath the cell wall and separating it from cell cytoplasm cytoplasmic membrane acts as an osmotic barrier it is the site of numerous enzymes that is permease oxidase polymerase involved in active transport of selective nutrients it acts as a semi permeable membrane controlling the inflow and outflow of metabolites to and from the protoplasm the cytoplasma the bacterial cytoplasm is a colloidal system containing a variety of organic and inorganic solutes in a viscous watery solution it lacks mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum of eukaryotic cell it contains ribosomes mesosomes vacuoles and inclusions ribosomes these are the centers of protein synthesis they are composed of rna and proteins intracytoplasmic inclusions are the sources of stored energy and are present in some species of bacteria their function and significance are uncertain mesosomes are vesicular multilaminated or convoluted structures formed as invaginations of the plasma membrane into the cytoplasm they are principal centers of respiratory enzyme and are analogous to the mitochondria of the eukaryotes let us quickly look at the nucleus bacterial nucleus has no nuclear membrane or nucleolus 
The genomic DNA is double stranded in the form of a circle. The bacterial DNA is haploid, replicates by simple fission, and maintains bacterial genetic characteristics. Some bacteria may possess extranuclear genetic material in the cytoplasm consisting of DNA named as plasmids or episomes. The plasmids replicates autonomously. They are not essential for the life of the cell but may confer on the bacteria certain properties such as drug resistance and toxigenicity which constitutes survival advantage to the bacteria. Bacterial capsule and slime layer it is the amorphous viscid bacterial secretion which surrounds some bacteria as their outermost layer. When it diffuses into the surrounding medium and remains as a loose undemarcated secretion, it is known as a slime layer. When this secretion is organized into a sharply defined structure as in the Streptococcus pneumoniae, it is known as a capsule. The slime layer is usually polysaccharide in nature, but it is polypeptide in anthrax bacillus. The functions of the capsule is it enhances bacterial virulence by inhibiting phagocytosis. It acts as a protective covering against antibacterial substances such as bacteriophages, phagocytes and enzymes. Capsular antigen is specific for bacteria and can be used for identification and typing of bacteria. Capsulated organisms are Streptococcus pneumonia, Bacillus anthracis, Cryptococcus neoforms. Now, let us move on to study the flagellum. A flagellum is a lash-like appendage that protrudes from the cell body of certain prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. The word flagellum in Latin means whip. The primary role of the flagellum is locomotion but it is also often has a function as a secondary organelle being sensitive to chemicals and temperatures outside the cell. Flagella are organs defined by function rather than structure. There are large differences between different types of flagellum. The prokaryotic and eukaryotic flagella differ greatly in protein composition, structure and mechanism of propulsion. However, both are used for swimming. An example of a flagellate bacterium is the ulcer causing helicobacter pylori, which uses multiple flagella to propel itself through the mucus lining to reach the stomach epithelium. An example of a eukaryotic flagellized cell is the mammalian sperm cell, which uses its flagellum to propel itself through the female reproductive tract. Eukaryotic flagella are structurally identical to the eukaryotic cilia, although distinctions are sometimes made according to function and or length. The flagellum in bacteria allow the cells to move from one place to another in a liquid medium. This movement can aid in survival for the bacterial cells, allowing them to move to a more nutrient-rich environment if their current location loses nutrient content. Let us look at the flagellum structure. The flagellum consists of a group of proteins oriented into a rotor, a hook and a tail. The ability of a rotor to turn about a solid base is driven by the proton motive force. The proton motive force refers to the building up of protons across the cell membrane. Protons in this gradient then move back across the cell membrane, creating the energy used to drive the motor of the flagellum, allowing it to rotate. The classification of flagellum Monotrichus flagellum. The name is used to identify the different types of flagellations indicate the location of the flagella on the cell. A monotrichous flagellum is located on one end of the bacterial cell. The flagellum embedded in the double cell membrane of the bacterial cell rotates around the counter clockwise. This rotation drives the bacterial cell forward. Example is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Amphitrichous flagellum Amphitrichous flagella are located at each end of the bacterial cell. The increased number of flagellae and the arrangement on both ends of the cell allow the bacteria to move from standstill to forward or reverse directly. 
With the monotrichous flagellum, the bacteria can only move in one direction and maneuvering is more difficult. Example is Aqua spirulum serpents. The third category is the lophotrichous flagellum. The flagella in lophotrichous arrangement are situated on one end of the bacterial cell as with a monotrichous flagellum. However, instead of just one flagellum, multiple flagella help drive the cell forward. With more flagella working at the same time, the bacterial cell can move faster from point A to point B. Example is Pseudomonas fluorescence. Peritrichous flagellum. The peritrichous flagella are located randomly over the surface of the bacterial cell. Many flagella exist in the peritrichous orientation and can cover the entire cell. These bacteria can easily move in any direction needed. This is especially useful when trying to move forward areas of nutrients or away from areas that contain no nutrients or other potentially harmful substances. Example is Salmonella typhi. In certain large forms of Selenomonas, more than 30 individual flagella are organized outside the cell body helically twinning about each other to form a thick structure called a fascicle. Other bacteria such as most spirochetes have two or more specialized flagella arising from opposite poles of the cell which together constitute the so-called axial filament that is located within the periplasmic space between the flexible cell wall and an outer sheath. The rotation of the axial filament relative to the cell body causes the entire bacterium to move forward in a corkscrew-like motion, even through material viscous enough to prevent the passage of normally flagellated bacteria. Counterclockwise rotation of a monotrichous polar flagellum pushes the cell forward with the flagellum trailing behind, much like a corkscrew moving inside cork. Indeed, water on the microscopic scale is highly viscous, very different from our daily experience of water. Flagella are left-handed helicals and bundle and rotate together only when rotating counterclockwise. When some of the rotors reverse direction, the flagella unwind and the cell starts tumbling. It has also been suggested that even if all flagella would rotate clockwise, they will not form a bundle due to geometrical as well as hydrodynamic reasons. Such tumbling may happen occasionally, leading to the cell seemingly thrashing about in place, resulting in the reorientation of the cell. The clockwise rotation of a flagellum is suppressed by chemical compounds favorable to the cell, example is food, but the motor is highly adaptive to this. Therefore, when moving in a favorable direction, the concentration of chemical attract increases and tumbles are continuously suppressed. However, when the cell direction of motion is unfavorable, example away from a chemical attractant, tumbles are no longer suppressed and occur much more often with the chance that the cell will thus reorient in the correct direction. In some Vibrio, and related proteobacteria such as the Aeromonas, two flagellar systems coexist, using different sets of genes and different icon gradients for energy. The polar flagella are consecutively expressed and provide motility in bulk fluid, while the lateral flagella are expressed when the polar flagella meet too much resistance to turn. These provide swarming motility on surfaces or in viscous fluids. Let us now look at the fimbriae. These are hair-like appendages projecting from the cell surface as straight filaments. They are also called pili. They are 0.1 micrometer to 1 micrometer in length and less than 10 nanometers in thickness. Fimbria is composed of a protein called pilin. They are unrelated to motility and are found on motile as well as non-motile bacteria. Classification based on types of fimbria are, there are three main types of fimbria. First is the common pili. These are six types depending on their morphology, number per cell, 
adhesive properties and antigenic nature. Number two is the sex or the F pili, which is also known as the fertility pili. Number three is the collicin pili, also called as the col eye. Functions of the fimbriae are first is the adhesion. Fimbriae are organs of adhesion. This property enhances the virulence of bacteria. Fimbria help in transfer of genetic material. Sex pili are present in male bacteria. These pili are longer and 1 to 4 in number. They help the male cells to attach to the female cells in forming conjugation tubes through which genetic material is believed to be transferred from the donor who is the male to the recipient that is the female cell. How do you detect a fimbriae? A fimbriae can be detected using electron microscopy or heme agglutination. Many fimbriated bacteria such as Escherichia coli and Klebsiella strongly agglutinate red blood cells. This property of heme agglutination is a simple method for detecting of fimbriae. Let us now look at the bacterial spore. Spores are highly resistant resting stage formed in unfavorable environmental conditions presumed to be related to the depletion of exogenous nutrients. As the bacterial spores are formed within the parent cell, these are called endospores. Sporulations is not a method of reproduction. The morphology of the spore. The cell membrane grows inwards and forms the spore wall around the core. The innermost layer of the spore wall forms the spore membrane from which the cell wall of the future vegetative bacterium develops. Outside this membrane is a thick layer, the cortex and the multilayered tough spore coat. Some spores have an additional apparently rather loose outer covering called exosporium. Classification based on the spore morphology. Spores may be central, subterminal or terminal. Spores can also be oval or spherical in shape. The diameter of spore may be same or less than the width of the bacteria or may be wider than the bacillary body producing a distension or a bulge in the cell. Example is Clostridium. Examples for spore forming bacteria are obligate aerobes such as the genus Bacillus. Bacillus anthracis and Bacillus subtilis are also examples. Obligate anaerobes such as the genus Clostridia, Clostridia tetani, Clostridia welchi and Clostridia botanillum. Thus, these are the different organs of a bacteria and these are the different classifications based on the morphology and flagella. Thank you.